Thank you guys so much for the support you've been providing on my embedded content recently. Today I thought I would answer the most prevailing question by far I was asked on all of those videos, which is, what degree do I need to do embedded? Or some kind of variant, like, I have X degree, is this going to be good enough to get into embedded? So I thought I would do this video. I have two degrees. I have one in electrical engineering and one in computer science. So I'm going to kind of tell you where the knowledge gaps are. I also work as an embedded developer. So we're going to talk about what I actually do on the job, what's needed, what different degrees teach you and what they don't. So let's get one thing out of the way really quick. Embedded is a very wide field in terms of variety. There is so much to it and there are so many different roles that you can play. So I want you to consider like an embedded device versus a website, okay? With an embedded device, it's got to have a housing, it's got to have packaging, it's got to have all of this. So of course, there's going to be like mechanical and industrial design roles, which of course you wouldn't get with a website. Now that extends to the technical side as well, like the, uh, the software and the hardware. So think about this. Um, the, the main question that I got is like, okay, electronics, what's the deal with electronics? If I just did like computer science or software engineering, can I still do embedded? Um, I want to say that there is a pipeline. That's my opinion. My opinion is there is a pipeline. However, there's a very big caveat. Okay. Now, some embedded companies, if they're smaller, will expect a full stack embedded engineer. So that is somebody who does the entire product, the circuit design, the firmware, the whole lot. Um, now, bigger companies, you'll generally see like they have a dedicated hardware guy and they'll offer embedded software roles. So for example, in my current role, I don't actually do any hardware design. I'm capable of it. I'm not necessarily that good at hardware design as opposed to my software skills, but I don't have to do any of it because we have hardware and electronics engineers at this company who will do that job for me. So all I have to do is sit there and write the firmware that runs on the microcontroller. The market for self-taught electronics engineers is not as big as the market for self-taught software engineers for good reason, okay? Like, consider this. If you make Bluetooth earbuds and they blow up in somebody's ear uh, and then it finds out that it was a self-taught electronics engineer, you're going to be in really big trouble. So it's... um. The market for self-taught electrical engineers is not as big for very good reason. Like if your CRUD if your CRUD website like messes up and hits a 404, then who cares? But if you make a mistake and your earbud blows up in somebody's ear, then you've got a really big problem. So I th actually think it's a good thing that electronics is kind of gatekept behind degrees. Uh, that's my hot take on that. But in terms of software roles, so okay, let's say we didn't do an electronics related degree. We did like computer science or software engineering or something like that. How do we get into the embedded field just as a, as a concept? Because like I said, there are so many roles. Like you, obviously a mechanical engineer or an industrial designer has no idea about firmware or hardware or software. They have no idea, but they're still in the embedded field. So if you're a software engineer who wants to get into this field, how can we achieve that? Well, uh, it, it goes a little bit something like this. You're going to want to target embedded software roles. Embedded software roles. Um, not having an electronics degree is a disadvantage or an electronics related degree is a disadvantage. But for embedded firmware design roles, you simply have to know how the hardware works at a very high level. You don't have to understand how to design it. You have to understand, you have to be able to read electronic schematics. You have to be able to say, okay, this pin goes here, this goes here. You have to understand what hardware devices do and you have to understand voltage and electronic signaling. Uh, I have an electronics section in my roadmap guide, by the way, if you're interested in, in what electronics you need to get into the field or what you need to upskill in to get into the field. But what I'm trying to say is there is a pipeline. If you can self-teach yourself the basics of electronics, you're not going to be working as a hardware engineer designing circuits, but you could potentially grab an embedded systems software related role where understanding of the hardware is required, but not necessarily designing the hardware. And especially now that in Embedded we have very high-level uh, constructs like Zephyr and FreeRTOS, it's, it's almost like good software skills, like good higher-level software skills. Like, for example, Zephyr feels a whole lot like systems programming after a little while. It doesn't really feel like Embedded. Uh, once you do all of the hardware configuration, all of the board initialization, uh, after that, because you have an RTOS, you've got threading, well, you know, kind of fake threading, but you've got primitives like locks, events, things like that. It starts to feel a whole lot like systems programming. So if you've come from that kind of background, 
where you've made um, distributed systems or you have done things with event-driven design or like asynchronous stuff. Uh, that can really help you when you come into embedded software if you're working with these high-level constructs like Zephyr. Now, keep in mind, we don't want bloat in embedded. So leave your um, like web developer, like, okay, I won't go too hard on web developers, but the joke is the web's super bloated. Everyone just like does NPM install for everything. I'll say this as well. You're not going to be NPM installing is odd or is even, all right? Uh, there's not really a central repository where all things embedded are and you can just import packages for embedded. Every peripheral, every device is going to be quite different. And so you have to sort of leave your framework or mindset at the door if you want to come into this. I'm talking about if you've like previously done like web development experience and you want to break into the field. So where we're at now is you'll be looking for like embedded software roles where you have to understand the hardware but not necessarily design it. I think it's going to be very tough competition if you want to try and do circuit design. Like, let's be clear, okay? Not having an electronics degree is a disadvantage, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. I honestly think that you can make up for it and become an embedded software engineer if your projects are really good. So uh, I've got videos on embedded projects, like some project ideas, and we're also going to be doing a video series on this channel of being that full stack embedded engineer, doing the whole design from start to finish, and you'll find the prototyping and the firmware parts, which I'm about to go and uh, go and construct, you'll find those particularly interesting if you're a software engineer wanting to come over to Embedded. So uh, your projects are going to have to be really good. That's where you're going to have to make it up. Because if I'm looking at your resume and I just see a whole bunch of web stuff, I'm thinking, why does this guy want to come work in Embedded? So you're going to want to get your projects good. Uh, it's, it can be even simple things like right here. I have this like little STM dev board. Just get one of these. They're, they're really cheap. They're like um, 15 bucks or something. Pick one up and go play around, blink some LEDs, do some projects and uh, and just get familiar with it. You don't even have to do any circuit design. You can just grab a breadboard. Uh, sorry, PCB design. You still have to wire up a circuit and everything, but you don't have to do a PCB. Just get like a breadboard and a STM dev board or something like that and just mess around. And your your projects. Let's, let's put it like this, okay? If you're trying to compete with people with electronics degrees, the software component of your projects has to be really, really good. So I'm talking about you have to be using pretty advanced design decisions uh, or like actually articulating your design decisions correctly and showing that you're not going to bring the web developer bloat mindset into embedded. So that's going complex and abstract when you need to and being dead simple and bare metal where you don't and showing that you can actually make those correct decisions um, and, and actually transition from the higher level where everything is very fast and you've got very powerful computers and, and you can show that you're actually being performance conscious. You're going to have to show advanced things like, can it communicate with PC software? Uh, can it communicate maybe with a mobile app or something like that? Like what kind of advanced features? Can, I, can it save to Flash? Can it do like user settings management? Can it do all of these different things? Can it talk to other devices? Uh, these sort of like more advanced software things. How's the concurrency going? Can it manage a bunch of tasks at once? If you are a software engineer, you should use your software skills to demonstrate that you can bring this to a low level, less bloat environment. And that's why I say good software skills are important. Uh, note I say like good as in fundamentals of like multitasking and operating systems and uh, distributed systems and networking and things like that and event-driven design. For example, uh, if you're used to doing UIs in JavaScript where you've got a callback on every button and it goes and runs a function, well, that's very similar to interrupts in Embedded. So as long as you can take a step back and detach from the mindset of this is a JavaScript thing, this is like a uh, built into this language, I have to learn something completely new and say like, no, these are the parallels. These are the parallels. Interrupts in event, uh, interrupts in uh, embedded are very similar to just event-driven callbacks in JavaScript or these higher level languages that you've been dealing with. So the ability to step back and map the software architecture and software engineering concepts between the two and then applying that in projects is gonna really make you stand out as an embedded software engineer. Uh, because I'll be honest with you, like a lot of the embedded software engineers that I've seen uh, they don't actually have a very good grasp of software engineering. They have a they have a decent grasp of hardware and a decent grasp of software, but they write pretty poor quality code. That's generally speaking what I've seen.
So if you've got a good grasp of software engineering, you can learn a bit of hardware, come on over to the, uh, like do some projects, come on in. Um, and if you've got a good grasp of both, well, you're gonna be cracked in this field. So that's what we're all going for. So to sum up, like what degree do you need to do? Um, I honestly think like a computer science degree or a software engineering degree is fine. You just have to supplement that with projects and show that you are capable of understanding hardware, of understanding how microcontrollers work, of how to read data sheets. And you can actually bring that experience down into a lower level. Just don't expect to be doing hardware design because I seriously doubt that you will be. Anyway, those are my thoughts on degrees needed for embedded systems from a guy that's got both electrical and computer science. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think as well. Cheers.